hello students once again i welcome you to my new video session and this is this video session is continuation of the iot cartridges in vertebrates this is the part 2 of it the part 1 was regarding the teleost deployment and the eurodeal uh, iot cartridges and in this video we are continuing with the iot cartridges modification of iot cartridges in reptiles birds and mammals so in reptiles they are fully terrestrial vertebrates so gills completely are absent there so in the diagrammatic representation you don't see any gills over there the first one is reptilian the second diagram is of a bird and the third one is a mammalian aortic arch system so in reptiles uh, they are fully terrestrial so they don't have any kind of a gills only three functional aortic arches are there which i have labeled here you can see the second the sorry the third fourth and sixth one the four the third fourth and sixth aortic arches remain there uh, but there is a slight development of neck before this in amphibians up to amphibians neck was not properly developed here the development of neck and posterior shifting of heart takes place uh, so that's why there is uh, what you call as the entire aorta generally splits forming three trunks uh, that is two aortic and two aortic or systemic and one pulmonary so two aortic split ups and one is uh, pulmonary splitting up of here so that is about the reptilian one so what are the major points to be remembered about reptilian type of arterial system the right systemic arch that is the fourth one the right systemic arch that is the fourth one arises from the left ventricle you can see in the diagram it arises from the left ventricle uh, it carries generally oxygenated blood to the carotid arch generally to the carotid arch and generally carotid arch carries that oxygenated blood to the head part of the body now if you talk about the left systemic arch that is the fourth one fourth one this one fourth one generally it leads uh, uh, what you call as it arises from the right ventricle this arises from the right ventricle and carries deoxygenated blood or mixed blood to the body through dorsal aorta through the dorsal aorta generally it carries the deoxygenated blood the pulmonary trunk is one more that is the sixth one the sixth modification which is pulmonary trunk here which you can see it also emerges from the right ventricle itself and carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs for purification whereas ductus caroticus and ductus arteriosus are absent here and uh, ductus caroticus is present in snakes and lizards this is a point to be remembered ductus caroticus and ductus arteriosus are absent in most of the reptiles but there are some exceptions like uh, ductus caroticus is present in snakes and lizards ductus ar uh, ar ductus arteriosus is present in some turtles reptilians also are cold-blooded animals so generally their blood system is similar to reptil what you call as amphibians and fishes because of there is a mixing of blood except crocodilians crocodiles you have they have a four chambered heart but still they are cold-blooded one now coming to birds and mammals there are many things common between birds and mammals the only thing is there is a slight change in arrangement of the aortic arches but functionally probably they are similar so both birds and uh, mammals are warm-blooded animals and because of that usually out of six aortic arches only uh, three arches remain when they uh, develop into an adult in the embryological stages they may have all the six pairs of aortic arches in adults only three of them are remaining that is the third fourth and sixth one so generally the uh, what you call as ventral aorta is uh, replaced by uh, what you call as independent aorta or also called as trunk system or pulmonary arteries then if you talk about the fourth arch it is single systemic aorta either left systemic aorta or right systemic aorta you can see here in uh, birds it is a uh, uh, right one and in mammals it is a uh, left one that is the difference 
you have generally radix is also present and dorsal aorta is continuation of it it's all common there the remaining part of the systemic arch represented by subclavian artery is present on left sides in birds and right side in uh, mammals okay the subclavian one which is generally present so in uh, birds and mammals as we can see uh, the subclavian in birds is present here this this is the labeling of it okay this is subclavian in birds both sides and in mammals it is here clear then if you talk about the third aortic arch with uh, remnants of lateral and ventral aorta they generally represent the carotid arteries which arise from the systemic aorta and arch fourth arch generally is a single pulmonary trunk taking deoxygenated blood from right ventricles to the lung whereas embryonic ductus carotidus and ductus arteriosus they disappear in adults only in embryonic stage they they are present generally uh, what do you call as uh, uh, at the time of birth or at the time of hatching of eggs in some cases a thin uh, ligament of botali or ligament arteriosum may be present which is not labeled here but it may be present in some birds or primitive mammals so again this video is also continuation of the last video of arterial system in different animals especially the vertebrates so what the points you have to remember here is in the reptilian uh, reptilian birds and mammals reptilians they have more similarity with that of amphibians and uh, what do you call as fishes whereas birds and mammals they are having more things common in them but there is a slight difference that is between right systemic artery and left systemic artery apart from that there is also uh, deviation of development of the subclavian artery right so the dotted lines are those which arches have disappeared the clear lines tell you about the aortic arches which are present and are functionally developed in these animals so i would like to stop this video here itself and we'll continue with the uh, comparative anatomy of hearts of vertebrates in the next session thank you